Welcome back to the class Computational Neuroscience, Neuronal Dynamics of Cognition. In the previous section, we have defined population activity in a population of neurons with similar properties. But are there such populations? Can we think of really finding neurons that have similar properties that possibly sit next to each other, that we can do a spatial average that makes sense? Yes, I will argue that columns of orientation-selective neurons in visual cortex are good candidates for such neural populations. Those who have heard about visual cortex and columns and receptive fields before can skip this section and go directly to section 3. For the others, please stay tuned. So suppose your experimental colleague puts in an electrode in the cortex in an area that's called visual cortex, while on the screen light dots appear. So these light dots appear at different locations and what you will find, what your experimental colleague finds, is that whenever the light dot enters a small region, then the activity of this neuron changes. It might, for example, increase. So outside, no response. Inside, strong response. Now what's interesting is if you now move electrode just a little bit, you put it a little bit deeper or you shift it just a little bit and you redo the experiment, you find something very similar. You find that neighboring cells in visual cortex have very similar receptive fields, very similar zones where they are sensitive to visual input. Now in visual cortex the receptive fields are localized. You see here a localized zone map back to the screen, so whenever the light dot is in this area, you would get a response. But moreover, inside this receptive field, there's a substructure. So, and this substructure is different in visual cortex to, to the retina or intermediate processing step that's called the LGN. So, in the visual cortex, the light dot that moves in and out would have a zone where it increases the response of the cell and the zone where it decreases the response of the cell. And these zones can be oriented vertically or they can, have, they, they can have an oblique orientation. So here again, a center zone, a positive zone, an excitatory zone, and a suppressive zone next to it. Now, in the retina, these zones also exist, but they have a center surround structure, a center, for example, where you have excitation and the surround where you have inhibition. So in visual cortex, we can say uh, that the zones have a substructure which leads to orientation selectivity. Let me explain this. If, you're not, if you now use a light bar and not a light dot, then you can move this light bar across the screen and it will touch different regions of the receptive field. And while it's over here, it will sit over the excitatory subfield of the receptive field, so it will excite the neuron, whereas here it will suppress the activity compared to the gray background. Now, a different cell, a neighboring cell, may have a different receptive field, and you see that the optimal stimulation corresponds to an oblique position, to an oriented bar, and that's why it's called orientation selective. If you turn the bar into this position, the positive and the negative part of this cell will be evenly stimulated so that there's no strong response, whereas, whereas in this position, you have the optimal stimulation. So we can plot the orientation of this light bar as a function of stimulus orientation. And if I change the light bar, I have here the optimal orientation. And if I turn the light bar further, the activity of this cell, of this one cell, will turn down. So the firing rate of this cell represents the orientation of the stimulating light bar. And this cell is then characterized colloquially by its preferred orientation, for example, 65 degree. So, I said before that neighboring cells have similar receptive fields, so they have similar location of the receptive field. Now, moreover, neighboring cells have similar orientations of the receptive field. So, cells in this first region would all have close to vertical sensitive sensitivity, if I move the electrode a little bit, I would find cells that have a preferred orientation which is similar but somewhat different. So overall, the message here is that 
neighboring neurons have similar properties. And that's why it makes sense to talk about a population of cells. A population of cells, a population of neighboring cells, will respond similarly to a stimulus. Now, analogously to what we have seen before, neighboring cells have different preferred spatial location of receptive field. We now have, have a, another map, the cortical orientation map, which says neighboring cells in visual cortex have similar preferred orientation. So let me summarize this section. The receptive field is the set of all stimulus features to which a neuron responds. In visual cortex, this would be the location of the receptive field, this would be the orientation of the receptive field, maybe the color, maybe something else. And similar notions hold also in audition, in some other sensory cortex, and so forth. Now, for the rest of the, today's lecture, the point is that neighboring cells in visual cortex they have similar preferred orientation, they have a similar location of their receptive fields. And there are quite a few of these. There are many of these cells. So local neighborhoods of cells form populations of cells with similar properties, and therefore they are candidates of neuronal populations. Before we go on, let's have a look at the quiz.